I've been following Rebel Media for some time now on the issues the world is facing today, and if you haven't so far, I suggest you do as well. Uh, recently, Congressman Steve Scalise, Republican, was shot and severely injured by Democratic Party activist James Hutchinson, a frequent consumer of mainstream left media, may, many of the same shows that most of my own family watches. It is insanely hypocritical when Democrats and left-wingers pile rule upon rule on society about what you can and cannot say, what is and what isn't hate speech, according to their comfort and convenience and agenda, and yet use the most violent idea control when and however they see fit. They preach universal tolerance, yet show anyone and everyone who has different ideas and opinions from them, none. And just, just a few days ago, um, la last week I came down with um, a bad cold, uh, that's uh, why I haven't made videos in a couple weeks. Um, I was watching Shuan Head's video about her being banned from BuzzFeed because she created this quiz asking, what kind of feminist are you? And it seemed a very non-threatening quiz. Uh, it's no different from many similar questionnaires uh, people take online uh, for fun, not for curiosity. And it was repeatedly taken down time after time. And after she had uh, uploaded it a few times, she was banned from the site completely inquired as to why, and received a note saying that she had content, meaning that very quiz, that had been deemed hatery. Is hatery even a word? Well, just to let you people know, especially other millennials, I'm, I'm a millennial, um, so I say other, uh, because it seems this generation has been hyper-raised, uh, brainwashed, actually, by the government. And other pro- well, yeah, mostly government programs and, and, and parents' choices. Uh, to be hypersensitive, and if you even barely suggest a different opinion from their own, you're suddenly a rapist, uh, Nazi, a phobe. Uh, I don't think they understand what phobe actually means. It means an irrational fear, and there are plenty of very grounded reasons to be afraid of the way the world is going today. Having a different viewpoint from the left is not hate. Merely having a different perspective from someone else is not hate or intolerance. It's when you force your ways on another that is intolerance. I am so sick and tired of this! And I get it from my own mother, my, my own sisters, aunts and uncles, grandmother. Um, not really my, my father, he is a little more resilient, although our relationship is strained for other reasons. But I have tried many times to speak out against this hypocrisy using logic and a cool head, which should have been able to work. Uh, not saying they have to see things my way, but should have at least been able to have had uh, conversations where I wasn't the one being called a hater. Uh, I mean, my mother's a scientist in, in, in a different field than I am, but, but still, and all I get her are these accusations. 
I've literally lost just about all of the ones mm, amiable, sustainable relationships I had with my family to, uh, in order for me to, uh, to speak, to make videos, have conversations, and take a stand against this, I've, I've lost all, uh, almost all, the relationships. But I feel I need to. I feel I, uh... <laughs> Isn't it funny, uh, when parents and when education, uh, they, um, uh, they, they say they raise children to, uh, to invite new ideas, to, to, to be scientists, to be, uh, questioning and curious. And they're surprised when a few of us start questioning things. Um, I said I've lost almost all, all my relationships. Uh, my father, mm, that's a more complicated story. Uh, I do have a younger brother, ha half brother actually, who I can talk to about this, but he is still living with a single mother. Uh, he's, he'll be an adult in a couple of years. So for the time, living with her, who was a brutally, emotionally abusive stepmother to me and my two full sisters, okay? Uh, both genders were abused here. Uh, and who, as soon as she had her own children with our father, the five of us do share a father, um, and as soon as she had the, the government's support, uh, and somewhat of a plan, took off and drained away my father's money to send her own kids to an unnecessarily expensive private school for many, many years, severing their connection with three older half-siblings who, despite the cruelty their mother showed them, um, despite the cruelty of the stepmother, the step-siblings, constantly went out of their way to be good siblings and secondary caretakers for them. Uh, separated us, dragged our father through the family courts, through alimony for years, effectively shattering the family beyond repair forever, which the courts fully encouraged because the narrative is that the mother is always the better parent. Bullshit. And even though this one had repeatedly traumatized her stepchildren for near a decade, but hey, no one cares about the children's experiences, do they? Anything to feed the left's insatiable narrative, even when it has more gaping holes than moth-eaten Swiss cheese that's been gnawed on by rats until even the rats die of its rot. I barely get to see my younger brother at all. And any time we do spend together it has to be carefully coordinated so that we can spend a couple of hours at a movie or a bowling alley. Uh, I was arranging a trip to Gen Con with him this summer, but he told me last night that uh, it's been planned for him to go see his uh, his cousins on his, on his mother's side during that time, and uh, I, of course, can't change Gen Con's schedule. Uh, I didn't fight it, because he said he uh, he did want to go see those cousins and um, that side of the family, and I'm not going to put him in any harder of a position than he is already. But the timing does uh, seem suspicious, to say the least. And I had told him about planning for the convention uh, since the winter. I'm in the final stages of planning, um, picking the events. Uh, the, these things take months of planning. 
and and I had told him I, I'd be working I'd been working on this so it was known I'm still going and I hope to bring you back you, you guys back some cool stories so a video I saw today Laura Loomer for Rebel Media was attending a stage production of the Shakespearean play Caesar and on stage, during the part where Julius Caesar is stabbed to death, the actors take delight, as does the audience, in the slaughter of a character of Caesar made to look like President Donald Trump. Which is clearly a political message. There, there's no way it's not. I highly doubt the historical Caesar looked like Trump at all. And you don't make those kind of changes unintentionally. Laura went up to the stage and protested the message, yelling at the cast, you have to stop the normalization of political violence against the right. This is not acceptable. And she's absolutely correct. What do you think would happen if a production of a famous play suddenly made an actor up to look similar to Barack Obama and people cheered as he was assassinated on stage. I can tell you what the outcry would be. Stop those horrible racists! Shut down the play! Fire the crew! And more, right? It's not complicated, people! The normalization of political violence against against blacks, against minorities, is unacceptable. Well, okay. If the normalization of symbolic acts of political violence, or you know, blatant political violence, and don't get much more blatant than the left is right now in their hypocrisy, but using violence to control politics is wrong, then it has to be wrong on both sides. I have never seen such blatant acts and words of hate and murderous motives towards any American president as I've watched toward Donald Trump. It's not just characters and plays or parade floats that people rit ritualistically tear to pieces. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen them do that. It's holding of a makeshift severed head, which uh, did have some some consequences, but not nearly what we would have seen if someone was holding an Obama or Hillary looking head. It's calling him Hitler. That has got to stop. Trump is not Hitler. He has never called for the rounding up and extermination of anyone, nor have any of his supporters. And to my knowledge, Hitler was not trying to restrain the growth of his own government, among other things. Laura was escorted out. Um, and by the way, she left peacefully, still yelling and pointing out the blatant hypocrisy, but she did not fight the police or threaten anyone or hurt anyone. She was arrested, uh, later released, but is charged with trespassing, which is bullshit. She bought a ticket. And disorderly conduct. Well, you know, when people are putting on shows of the assassination of a national leader, not to mention who, one who is actually trying to save the world of the West, I think some opposition is more than a little called for. On the Rebel Media website, there is a petition and a fund to free Laura from the authorities and what court process they're going to put her through. I quickly signed and contributed some money, and I suggest anyone who's had enough of the left's disgusting double standards to do the same. And ditch watching the mainstream media. She was incredibly brave to do what she did. And I know our generation has been hurt by many things. But it's time for us to show the same bravery. I can't make a video on every situation that arises, on uh, every occurring 
in the world. I'm straining to barely keep up with a few as it is. Um, and I'm still trying to put my and my siblings shattered lives back together with what time I still have with them. But I am going to continue to talk about these issues. You know, a few conservative people raise concern about mass illegal or unvetted, unfiltered immigration and don't threaten anyone. Mobs start shouting, Nazis, racists, KKK, show some honor, go away. Well, Democrats, where's your honor? You destroy families through the welfare state and the family courts. You destroy the black communities by blowing racial tensions and relations way out of proportions. And telling them that the only reason they're culturally held back is the aftermath of slavery, which is being gone for well over 150 years. And uh, just, just, just a few decades ago, before the massive welfare state, the, the families were far better off, so apparently they had already begun to recover. Until you started telling everyone that the government is the only reliable power in the world. Unbelievable bullshit. You destroy gender relations by telling boys who are, from the time they're barely into their teens, that they're born rapists. Which distorts the very distinction and definition of rape. Puts innocent men in prison, while at the same time inviting scores of people from Africa and the Middle East, where there is a very prominent rape culture, and the honorable Western men can't move to defend them at all. You preach to people about making the wealthy pay their, pay their fair share, but never instruct the working population, and the poor population, not to mention their children, about proper money management and self-reliance. Then, when a Democrat guns down Republicans in cold blood, when Muslim terrorists bomb innocent people at a gay nightclub or a girl power concert, when they shoot and stab people to death who had nothing to do with invading the Middle East, some of who are opposed to it, oh, it's all random isolated events. It's just a crazy person or a crazy few doing things completely unrelated in motivation. You disgust me. <coughs> Left. Democrats. All people who throw bombs and boulders at their political and narrative opponents and yet live in glass houses. You've blown your credibility forever. It's gone. 